the Gophers, number 33, Richard Coffey, and number 15, Connell Lewis. And now number 55, Bob Martin, a seven-foot sophomore, will also enter the game. Martin had a big game. Chicken Jansky started off well, but Martin had a big game against the, the other night. But what I, what I see that, that Clem is going to do is he's going to run all these people into the game because he sees it's going to be an up-and-down contest. And I'd say it favors him in the fact that he's got a deeper ball club. Witness the fact that both Scott and Anderson played all 45 minutes Friday night. Carmel Lewis with a good fake. And back come the golfers, Lynch on the drive, and he's fouled by McNeil. Right now, Nevada, Las Vegas, and Loyola Marymount would be hard-pressed to match this. I was going to say that. This is as good an athlete as Clem Haskins has on his team and Kevin Lynch. You know, when you talk to the coaching staff, they said that Kevin Lynch has got to play big for him. He's got to score. You saw him shoot the three-pointer. He can take it to the basket, and he had a big half on Friday night. He needs to continue that. And it was the second half, too. He had a two-point first half and came out blazing with 16 in the second half to help beat Syracuse. There's the four-year coach, Clem Haskins. Lynch hits them both, and Melvin Newburn checks back into the lineup for Minnesota. Well, yeah, I was going to say, Melvin Newberg is to tell his man to come out. They took Kevin Lynch out of the game. Newberg is in it. They're going to try a little full-court man-to-man pressure. That's what I would do. I'd try to make Kenny Anderson dribble the ball as much as I can as far away from the basket to try to wear him out. Connell Lewis is on Anderson now. He just broke free for a shot and it didn't fall. Newburn, good change of direction. Folks, if you haven't seen Melvin Newberg before, he can do those kinds of things, especially in the fast break. Good open court play. Minnesota with its biggest lead now, 20 to 15, 12, 15 to play first half. Carl Brown open for the three. And Lewis has the rebound. Kenny Anderson didn't get back. And all of a sudden, Canal Lewis was at the basket, and nobody from Georgia Tech stopped the ball. You must stop the ball in the fast break situation. And Lewis, all over Kenny Anderson in the backcourt, is charged with the foul. There's a timeout on the court with 11.52 to play in the first half. Minnesota leads at 22 15. Welcome back to New Orleans, everyone. When you got a team that wants the fast break, what you see here is that the Minnesota players are running here, but this is the only player with his head back. Georgia Tech is just pushing the ball down the sideline right now, and, and Minnesota's got to find out where the people are. So right here, you just look right up, and Kenny Anderson just throws the ball back because he knows on the sideline there's not a Minnesota player there. You see it finished off by Brian Oliver. You've got to keep your head on the swivel when you're going back on the defensive end. Georgia Tech inbounding the ball, and Connell Lewis getting big pressure underneath. See, the Gophers have been on a tear over the last three and a half minutes. Connell Lewis now being warned. <laughs> Clem Haskins says of Lewis, opposing guards don't phase our guards after they've practiced against Connell. You know, there's some players you want on a team because they can give you something in, in, in the game. Connell can do that, but what he really does is harass both Lynch and Newberg all day in practice. So they, they're used to pressure because Connell Lewis is a valuable player on the team. Well, Kenny Anderson is getting his first rest of the day. Oliver open. Mackey with the rebound, and Carl Brown will start it over. And Dennis Scott will put up a major league three-point from there. Seven for Dennis Scott, who set an ACC record for three-pointers in the season this year with 121 of them. Newburn in the lane. And was lucky to get the ball back. It really was. He's got the good head and shoulders, but had the shot and missed it. Scott, another three-pointer. 
Scott will go to the baseline off the glass too hard, and that's a travel. A couple of Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets fighting for the basketball. So I'll, I'll imagine you'll see uh, Kenny Anderson get back in the game because he is the one player that gets Dennis Scott shots in the floor of the offense because Dennis' second shot was just something he threw up there. That's why he missed the whole thing. Anderson back in to replace Carl Brown. Under 11 minutes to play in the first half. Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner at the Louisiana Superdome, 24-18. Minnesota on top and with the basketball. Georgia Tech back in man to man. Newburn inside. Nice move. Didn't get the roll or the bounce. And Mackey has the rebound. Oliver, good look inside for Mackey, but he's tied up. And the foul is going to be called. Just about ten and a half to play. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Superdome in New Orleans. The winner here between Minnesota and Georgia Tech moves on to Denver. Join the final four. Right now, Minnesota leads it 24 to 18. It has been Minnesota that has been taking advantage of the up-tempo pressure thus far. And they also, Greg, have been getting some good defensive efforts, but more importantly, they've gotten some offensive rebound baskets and putbacks. Richard Coffey with the foul. That's his first. Now, Golden Gophers, number 33, Richard Coffey. That's his first personal four feet. And back into the game back is Willie Burton from Minnesota. He'll replace Willie Walter Burton. Bond. At the line for the Yellow Jackets, shooting two. Here's Brian Oliver. Had a great ACC tournament. Finished as the MVP with 70 points and 15 rebounds and seven assists. Brian Oliver is one of those kids that originally Brian lived in Chicago and he, he moved out of Chicago to go to Georgia and, and he probably ended up somewhere in the Midwest but I'm sure Bobby Crimmins is just tickled to have him down at Georgia Tech. Burton called for the travel. Burton only a 12 point performance against Syracuse here Friday night. And, and I've got to wonder, because as I was watching take that move, Greg, is he trying a little bit too hard? Because he's had some shots inside that he's fumbled getting the ball in as well. There's an early key. That's the first Minnesota turnover. Scott, open. And the rebound off to number 15, Darrell Barnes, who is in the game, and the turnover from Georgia Tech. Burton down to Chicken Jansky, who doesn't take long to put it up. Georgia Tech will play behind you. That's why Willie Burton gets the ball in the paint and Chicken Jansky. They've got to start getting up front. Nice pass from Kenny Anderson to Brian Oliver. Roommate to roommate. Minnesota by five. Burton. Same thing. They will not Georgia Tech for some reason. They will not front. Burton has eight. Dennis Scott looking for Mackey underneath. Ball gets away. The Gophers have it. And lost it. Dennis Scott is fouled as he went to the hoop, and that'll be on Kevin Lynch. That is the third time already in this game that Dennis Scott has stripped the ball. Well, Dennis has got very quick hands, and I thought Willie Burton got a little bit of impatient here. You see Scott with the ball right here, and then he, he goes between two defenders, and then Kevin Lynch reaches in there. The fishing felt he got some hand, made the call. Dennis Scott shoots 79% from the line. Substitution into the game for Georgia Tech and is Johnny McNeil. Getting a lot of bodies in here. Going up and down the court, especially for people like Mackey and McNeil and Barnes. That wears the big man out. Hit them both. He now has nine points, and it's 28-23 Minnesota as we approach the nine-minute mark. For the key, Chicken Jansky. The Gophers are really clicking and making the most of their shots. Yeah, you're right. That, that was just good patience. They 
had run the play twice to Willie Burton's side and then ran it off the backside to come back to Chicken Jansky for the open jump shot. Chicken Jansky averages nine. He already has 11. Scott on his way to the hoop. Throws it up. Foul will be called out front. I want to remind you that following our action here in New Orleans, we'll take you out to Oakland. Brent Musburger, Billy Packer standing by to bring you the West Regional Final between the Lions of Loyola Marymount and the Running Rebels of UNLV. As well call them the Running Lions, too. <laughs> it will be some running in that game. Jerry Tarkanian said his club will run. And if he runs with uh, Loyola Marymount, if, if Loyola's making those shots, it's going to be a long afternoon for the Rebels. Well, Brent and Billy have done some training for this one. <laughs> Dennis Scott has his first free throw bounce off the front. Ten points for Scott. Six-point Gophers lead. Newburn to the baseline, up and over the rim, and the foul is called. Newburn is deceptively quick. Uh, New Melvin Newburn is a nice player, and by that I mean he can su he'll surprise people. And I've said he reminds me of Ray Williams. He'll lull you to sleep, go left, go right, get the ball up behind his head. That time the defense just fell asleep on him, and he took it to the baseline. Strong got the foul. Had a strong 20-point game in the victory over Syracuse. See, but Johnny McNeil with his second personal becomes something s significant here if he gets the third one, obviously, because they don't, Georgia Tech doesn't have as many big bodies that they can keep running in there, and it almost got them in trouble Friday night. So they've got to be concerned about their inside players getting in foul trouble. Newburn missed them both. Here's Anderson. Lighten up, you two guys! Lighten up! Now Carl Brown will look for Anderson again. Here's Scott. They're going to double him. Backed his way in and that's a charge. They were going to try to double him, and Dennis Scott heard it, and because Richard Coffey hollered, now, now, and in his anxiousness, Dennis Scott lost his balance and ran into Richard Coffey. Sixth turnover for Georgia Tech. And right now, you'd have to say things are going the way of the Gophers. They've, they've had the tempo they like, Wade. They, they run smartly, if you will. They'll, they'll run only when they have advantage. They won't try to force it up. Well, Georgia Tech will let time just try to force the action up. Burton for three. Oliver has it. Here come the Jackets. Anderson around his man and nails it. Ten points for Kenny Anderson. Georgia Tech within four. You see a very active Bobby Kremens on the sideline. Boy, is he ever active. Bond tried to get it down low, tapped away. Brown comes up with it. Well, he got that activity over to his players, and that's what he was really saying. Guys, you need to get more activity in the zone defense. McNeil kicks it back outside. Scott. Well, he can hit a shot from anywhere. Quick release, too. Thirty to twenty-eight, Minnesota's lead down to two, and the Georgia Tech fans have come alive here in New Orleans. Newburn to the baseline. <laughs> Anderson back in a hurry and lost control, and Newburn will push it back one on three, and batted out of bounds by Anderson. Six and a half minutes of play. Breakneck page. We'll take a pause and come back to New Orleans in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA championship reaches its grand finale in Denver. Begins at 5 Eastern time with a Final Four preview, followed at 5.30 by the National Semis. You know, one of the two matchups is Duke and Arkansas, and the winner here meets the winner of the game to follow between Nevada, Las Vegas, and Loyola Marymount. That's coming up Saturday here on CBS.
Six and a half to play. First half, Minnesota leading it by four. Greg Dumble along with Quinn Buckner in perhaps a faster-paced game than we expected, Quinn. Well, in the fact that these teams scored about 80 points a game, I'm, I'm not sure that it really is, but what we... We didn't anticipate as much as Minnesota is usually more of a, they, they take advantage of breaks, but they don't push it. And they have pushed it once or twice more often than I thought they would. Connell Lewis back in the game for Minnesota. They're playing this one, two, two zone, and, and inside they can get it to Shikin Jansky all the time they want to. And outside with Willie Burton, they got a three-point threat. So right now they got it going pretty well inside. Shikin Jansky with 13. The Gophers by six. Brown sinks his way inside and missed the layup. Rebounded by Coffey. Burton finds himself open. The song lost him. I don't know how you lose a Willie Burton. He was standing on the right side of the court. He came back to the left, and nobody from Georgia Tech ever looked at him. Burton has 11 with that three. It's 37-28, and now the Gophers enjoying their biggest lead, but back comes Anderson on the baseline. on five minutes to play first half you'll see Minnesota be patient because they they figured out they can get good shots they've gotten them inside as well as we saw Willie Burton just knock one down down outside so they just need to be patient Burton good move to the basket rolls around and out and coffee with the follow Richard Coffey's first bucket gives Minnesota the nine-point lead. Got a five-second call. Take a look at Kenny Anderson. We keep talking about how this young man is quick, Quinn. You maybe don't realize it until you have to try and defend him. Well, this is after a behind-the-back pass, and he gets on the defense so quick, Chicken Jansky can't cut him off, and he goes in the trees with the big people still able to get it down. I mean, he does. He gets at you so quickly that you don't have a chance to react. He puts you on your heels. Second time down court after that, he's called for the five-second call, and here's Minnesota. Bond. Again, Minnesota tough on the offensive board, and that was two against five. I mean, Georgia Tech is just not blocking out. Burton three. And the Gophers are on fire. 14 for Burton, 12-point lead for the Gophers. Oliver off the baseline, and the follow-up by Paul Brown. Brown sneaking inside from the backside. At that time, Minnesota got a little bit of its own medicine. They didn't block out. They got the shot taken on them. Here's Burton into the lane. Willie Burton with 16 points now, and again, back down court in a hurry. The block by Burton won't count. That'll call it a goal 10. 3.27 to play. First half, we'll take a break with the Golden Gophers. Looking golden. Burton has been playing an outstanding half of basketball, but here he tries to get back, and he goes up for the block, and there's no question if you see what The ball hits the, the backboard, and then he, he pins it, and it's coming down, so that it's definitely goal 10. What's pretty evident is that the Golden Gophers have been very aggressive at this end of the court. Well, uh, on the offensive end of the court, Greg, what they've done, Willie Burton as, as well as uh, Richard Coffey, is they've gotten some putbacks. They got 31 points from the front court, and Tech got, only got 14. All of it by Scott. So uh, Georgia Tech needs to get some more help, particularly from Brian Oliver. Ten offensive rebounds for the Gophers. And that's a charging call on Walter Bond. Carl Brown working hard on defense. Well, the goal, the goal goes to the sideline limping. Yeah, but I guarantee you he'll be back in the game. We watched him on Friday night go down three times, I mean hard, and get right back up and play. So I guarantee you he'll stay in the game if at all possible. Well, he's never leaving. Ten-point Minnesota lead. Change the defense here. You got a, a one-two-two.